saw Jesus, and he gave me this message to the church, especially to the church leaders, I mean to the pastors and to the bishop. Before that, I would like us to consider this passage. 2 Timothy 3 verse 5 Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. What many of the minister of Jesus are after now is not longer after God's will on earth, but after wealth, name, wisdom, grammatical grandiloquent. Everyone wants to preach mysteries, and Paul the Apostle told us that having the form of godliness, but the power of the same word we preach is not there. This is what the Lord Jesus told me this morning when he appeared to me. Listen and be blessed. I had an encounter with Jesus, and he sent me to his ministers, and I will like this message to be passed across the entire world immediately. So if you see this, please share it. He told me that he is the truth, and what he meant by that is that he is the truth of God sent to the earth. He told me that when he was on earth, everything that he did revealed the truth that he came to represent. He said when he preached, he preached the truth, and that the truth he preached comes with the reality of everything that is said. What he meant by that is when he preaches on salvation, the power or the truth of the word that he preach come to save the people. When he teaches on healing, the reality of healing, the fact, the truth of healing is being revealed. It became available so much that whosoever is sick there will be instantly healed. So Jesus told me to tell all his ministers that they should pray for the truth of his word to become a reality in their lives and ministry. That any time that they are preaching any word or any message, the truth in that message will become a reality to the listeners. He said many of his children are sick, but his ministers preach healings, and still they are not healed. Many needs one thing or the other, but then we preach that God is powerful and that he do all things, still yet the people are not yet having all that they needed. He says because of these his people, especially the pastors should go and pray vehemently that the reality of the truth of the word of God will become a reality in their lives. That from today onward, any time they open their mouth to preach, the reality of what they are saying will be made available because now he wants to see his church totally delivered and freed from the hand of the wicked ones. So to the pastors, Jesus is saying that you need to commit yourself totally to the place of prayers so much that every truth of the word that you proclaim will be made available to your listeners. Jesus is very serious with the affairs of his church. He wants to see his church being revived. He wants to see his church being healed. He wants to see his church working in the supernatural. He wants to see his church living in what they preach. He wants to see his church been delivered from the hands of the wicked ones. He wants to see his church becoming the glorious church that he came to institute upon the earth. It is based on this fact that he appeared to me and he told me that the pastor should pray to ensure that the reality of the truth of the gospel will be made known in his church. Please it's time that we embark on prayers to ask God that the reality of every truth that we preach is experienced in the church or wherever the message is proclaimed. I feel that the end time revival is here because the word is already at the verge of ending. And I can see that Jesus is already willing to release his entire power upon the church. So this are some of the reasons why he has chosen to appear to me and to pass this message across to the whole church. The time has come where all the ministers of God, we move in the power of God upon the earth, where all the ministers of God will carry out the divine ability of God upon the earth. Isaiah 62 chapter 6 to 12. Verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. 7. And give him no rest till he establish, and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. 8. The Lord hath sworn by his right hand, and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast labored. 9. But they that have gathered it shall eat it, and praise the Lord, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. 10. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, 
Cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. 11. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. 12. And they shall call them, the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. See the main point of emphasis here, Isaiah 62 verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. 7. And give him no rest, till he establish, and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. We are told not to give him rest until he makes the church a praise in the earth, until he establish the church, until healing, deliverance, and salvation is established in the church. O man of God, please, let's give ourselves to prayers ceaselessly until all this come to pass. Second, Timothy 3, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. This scripture is admonishing us not just to have the form of godliness alone. Power is not in the suit we wear. Power is not in the beautiful cars we buy. Power is not in the big houses we build. Power is not in the big churches we have. Power is demonstrated by the Spirit of God through His words. So God want us to have power and not to have the form of godliness. It is not enough that we have houses and big churches, but do not have power. How long should it be that the people are sick? Even in the church, still yet, we cannot heal them. All because we do not have power. Jesus want us to have power so that His people can be delivered. For Apostle Paul said, My messages are not with words of man's wisdom. They are not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. So every one of us, especially the ministers of God, must tarry in the place of prayer until you are endued with power from on high. May God grant us the grace and the ability to do the will of God in Jesus' name. One more time remember this, Prophet Joel admonishes us that all the priest and the servant God should cry and wail before the altar. They should cry until God looks upon us again dot, and heal the land. So I admonish all the ministers of God that we should always pray and wait on God until he send us power from heaven. May God bless his church in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to this, and I still want us to share this video as fast as we can, and we should also like and subscribe to this channel for more. Don't forget that God is looking up to the church now for excellence. I mean Jesus is having great expectation from the church. He wants his ministers to stand out to ensure that revival is being released everywhere. So let's not fail Jesus. Let's not fail our Creator. Let's not fail the one that sent us into this world to carry out this task. Remember that heaven is counting on you pastors. Heaven is counting on you, and the expectation of heaven is to see that the will of God be done upon the earth. May God bless all of us in Jesus' name, Amen.